Hmm. NATO has three years to prepare. Uh, I am surprised because just a few days ago, uh, Stoltenberg, uh, executive of the NATO, chief, boss, uh, claimed that uh, support for Ukraine is unconditional and unlimited, etc., etc., etc. Uh, so I don't see that news anymore. You see, this is just any time. Um, it's true I'm not Googling NATO, but tough stuff. Uh, what we see now is something else. Uh, I'm going to put the news underneath so that it can be seen. What we see now is something else, actually. The latest news that is coming out is this one here. Um, it's... Um, <clears throat> We should all be prepared for the bad news. This is the latest news from Ukraine, is what Stoltenberg says. It's kind of funny because the news is coming out. Ukraine's lifeline is hanging by a thinning thread. That's quite insane, isn't it? I mean... Uh, the job they did in Ukraine is shitty, as anything possibly can be. And uh, from unlimited support for Ukraine, um, we should uh, be prepared for the bad news, according to the Stoltenberg. We have to support Ukraine in uh, both in good and bad times, all right? Um, so far, it was really good, Mr. Stoltenberg. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking about how the good times are going to look like. Uh, I should say bad times. I have to wait for that one to see. This is quite amazing, really. And um, they're mentioning about uh, candidates in the US. I don't have to record this stuff because simply um, I worked hard on assisting Ukraine with knowledge I have best of my abilities. So it's also interesting because um, we just get news that suggests that Ukraine is shifting toward defense. Failed counteroffensive is over. Uh, deputy Russian commander killed in Ukraine. Uh, soldier tells BBC of frontline hell. 
Uh, this is the latest news, basically, that's coming from Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine attacks Ukraine with 12, whatever. Uh, news is convincing that Russia cannot be destroyed, cannot be beaten up. I'm not going to go to no conference over there about it. That's bizarre. That's fucking bizarre, man. And uh, what? Uh, oh, the NATO has a three years to prepare. Uh huh. Um, Stoltenberg undermined with his uh, Danish colleague, I think it's Erasmussen, was also Nick's previous NATO boss. Um, NATO vision, I should say, legacy to NATO severely. Uh, one demanded to eventually negotiate and surrender to the Russia, to the territory, and uh, his Scandinavian colleague Stoltenberg would not accept Ukraine to NATO. Um, I knew immediately something is really wrong because they started to... Uh, talk about Ukrainian Union, uh, Ukrainian state inside of the Ukrainian Union, uh, European Union. So it's like a big time uh, upside down matter of priorities. And it was this kind of shit they did involved in MK Ultra, basically how they're going to scam Ukraine uh, into giving up quarter of its territories the best, the most important land, basically, to the Russians. Ukraine, eastern part of Ukraine with Donetsk. That's crazy. Uh, I don't know about this. European Union, myself, is a strange mixture uh, of lies when it comes to European when it comes to European security when it comes to most eastern part of Europe that is non-Russian uh, it's strange that you would go and you would you know um, I like that lie about unconditional support to Ukraine a lot one Uh, that news is completely gone. It's like it never existed. That's something you gotta love about mainstream media. Nobody's asking what NATO boss just stated a few days ago. Where's the news? They had uh, this big NATO uh, meeting a few days ago. Where is that news? What's happening? I mean, I'm asking this because I, I can't even see one. Do you see this news? Why is it that the news is traced into the June and uh, August and so on about blah blah how Ukraine should join un uh, European Union but it shouldn't but it, it could if it gives up its territory etc. What's happening here? I mean I just googled Ukraine and NATO and I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna demonstrate you that news.
with God's will or will, uh, but that's not an easy one. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is five days ago, the news was such that you can see right there it's all about staying course and supporting ukraine blinken says u.s nato allies must will continue support ukraine nato committed to stepping up support to ukraine 20 hours ago mm, that's the news i haven't seen anywhere <laughs> um What's, what started with a strong announcement of unconditional support to Ukraine five days ago, a few days ago. It goes on with a mixture of the news, I would say 50-50, not even 50-50. It's now like... Uh, get ready for the bad news from ukraine even that during mk ultra this issue was in, interpreted to mean exactly other form i cannot go by bullshit i can only go by what i see because i got used to seeing a lot of lies basically and something is telling me that so far that's being done uh it's been done shit and the one who is willing and more than willing to liberate its land are ukrainian people we have seen unlimited sacrifice from ukrainian people that thing is certain as for the other side we have seen absolutely the worst support i have ever seen any organization providing anyone with and this is like a major it's supposed to be like the strongest alliance in the world and so on the ukrainians didn't even get the fucking jets anything nothing basically they are fighting over there in ukraine according to nato standards barehanded basically they just have enough to grab something and assault they're turning Soviet air defense uh, era, Soviet era air defense batteries into uh, like uh, um, infantry weapons, into infantry weapons, basically. Um, I am shocked that they're, they're sending like a mixed signals of which some of this i don't even have to bother with this some of the signals um some of the signals are clearly are suggesting that things aren't coming up for you It doesn't look that Ukraine is, is, is gaining it. Vladimir Putin continues to play with uh, nuclear buttons. Um, and the signal that's being sent to the world at this point in time uh, is just catastrophic. Based on what we have seen so far, NATO provided ukraine with uh on one side they send the powerful news that they're gonna stay course no matter what 
Oh, come on. Uh, and just five days later, get ready for the bad news. As I said, it was interpreted to me as something else, this so-called bad news. Uh, but, you know, it's the reality is stronger than delusion, illusion. I would consider myself as delusional at this point in time, truly delusional if I would give any kind of credit to NATO right now, any kind of like involvement in MK Ultra, the trash that they brainwash me with. I would consider myself sincerely delusional based on results I have seen basically based on performance, performance I have seen in the fields of Ukraine. What became clear was that they stalled assistance, they, they uh, sabotaged assistance uh, delayed through through delay basically they sabotaged military assistance to ukraine to deliberate delay to super heavy delay you know this fighter jets assistance this is one year ago when ukraine needed that stuff they needed the f-16 one year ago the f-16 didn't even come to ukraine anyway they didn't get anything yet there's nothing going on really and those jets that are about to come to Ukraine, if they ever will come to Ukraine, those are so few that won't make any kind of difference in Ukraine. Those are not, not F-35, those are just F-16 fighter jets. They're not even F-15 or whatever. Uh, I, at this point in time, have to ask myself, those jets ever going to come to Ukraine? That's how poor this stuff is. And, uh, you know, um, they don't have for ammunition. Uh, they, they provided few tools that Ukrainian military could use to make difference on a war field they got rid of a lot of those old tanks leopard german tanks were actually i think effective yeah they were effective um but you know landmines were already invented before the Leopard tanks. Uh, and recently we have seen how effective the landmines were. Uh, why was it that Ukraine used as a strategy zero landmines during invasion, during the Russian invasion on Ukraine? This is what is not really uh nobody asked this question these days we can see the landmines for the first time from on ukrainian from you from ukrainian side are making a difference obviously landmines are used for defense there was no defense till today that ukraine readied itself for uh, which is rather strange because Crimea was stolen 10 years ago. Russian did not annex Crimea as Google is brainwashing, mainstream media is brainwashing, but they invaded one. It was invasion. And people are being killed all over Crimea for the last 10 years at large. Trial, sentence at the city of Rostov on Don, Tatar people are being sentenced to death, basically. Spend life in jails and so on. And you're talking about here, you're talking about 
you're going from like unconditional support into something completely different. Uh, it's not even defense. It's actually uh, suggesting something completely different. Uh, it's totally unacceptable, uh, the view of Ukrainian Umerov, uh, because I don't know what the fuck he is trying to say here uh, by handshaking with the Stoltenberg, smiling. Uh, I don't understand any of it. Uh, to me, the words like assures Umerov, etc., etc., that you that will NATO will continue and so on. NATO is assistance to Ukraine is so shitty that it just basically couldn't be more shitty than what it is. So I don't understand what exactly is funny about this stuff, about the stuff I stressed. Uh, what is it exactly that? W what are you trying to say? I mean that that you're gonna stay, that you're gonna stay the course, and you you are gonna, uh, that you're committed to assistance, because this assistance, where is the assistance? I mean, we learned to use a landmines for the first time now, ever, during the conflict in Ukraine. So that must have been a part of the NATO strategy, basically, let Russia take quarter of Ukraine. And then fight from within for every inch, basically, and advance backwards toward freedom. Greatly delay supply of the weaponry was a strategy of a NATO. So, you know, thanks, man, for your commitment, for your long-term commitment is basically all I can say. I don't know what else I would say about this long-term commitment and unconditional assistance and European Ukrainian European Union membership coming and uh, you know eh, it's actually really what I stated a long time ago it's a transition uh, it's actually sale of Ukraine Ukraine being basically handed to the Russia uh russia gets a quarter of ukraine and uh with so much what ukrainian people could learn about european union and nato uh, they never ever will learn again this was the best experience this is this is a, this is what's called a reality reality you don't learn about who is who during the good times i don't know what Stoltenberg is talking about good and bad times, etc. We must during the good and bad times. You don't learn about a partnership, a real partnership during a good times. It's right now probably that it became more evident about what NATO is all about, what European Union is all about, than ever, ever again is going to be. So I think that Ukraine is going to fail entirely systematically. I think that United States of America, West signed agreement with Russia for a systematic destruction, takedown of Ukraine. First this, and then you become more and more disillusioned and so on, you know. Uh, even, you know, you're going to see this stuff. Ukraine is crippled. Numerous men are crippled. Numerous men were killed. Cities were destroyed, burned. Those who defended Ukraine were killed on the front lines. Folks, this is all yet to catch up. 
and this is the mighty gift from NATO. Extremely, extremely shitty. The whole thing, uh, I'm gonna say to Stoltenberg, Rasmussen. Uh, by the way, this one was really incredible. This one was incredible. This one actually suggested for Ukraine to just give up, basically, its territory, man, and make peace, basically. Anders Fogg Rasmussen. I, I am not going to go into this stuff here. You can see it yourself, what goes on. Uh, but this is incredible. Uh Ukraine learned exactly whatever Ukraine uh, yeah he he actually proposed for Ukraine to join repeatedly basically to just give up its land to the Russia and there you go then you can join oh well, um I would be sincerely based on the knowledge watching these people over the course of the years meeting with these people i really was drugged up uh and they were gonna use me as a tool basically silent and so on and make me even damage myself as much as possible something they can't hide anymore these people made a business with the russia and this is basically what a sale of the country looks like this isn't about quarter of Ukraine only. Uh, we all yet have to see how wonderful this European Union and NATO is. Uh, this proves basically that a NATO countries, um, or if you like, even the longest, the longest uh, participants in NATO, the original uh designers of the nato are going to be entitled to a lot of discounts when it comes to oil gas additional discounts uh, in addition to all the money they earned basically and well the eastern europe is not as strong anymore as it used to be it's entire eastern europe that is going in a question and that brings us closer to what 80 something years ago was uh, Molotov Ribbentrop Molotov plan uh, in respect to Poland. We, we have also seen that, right? We have seen how uh, uh, Hitler and Stalin met together. That's why I wouldn't make no difference between the two bosses. Uh, they were pretty much about the same kind, the same bunch. And now we can see that instead of Germany, we do have what is known as a NATO, and it's pretty much striking the same kind of deal with Russia uh, as to what Hitler did 80-something years ago with Joseph Stalin. All right, folks, thanks for watching this. It's going to be wonderful. Nobody's going to have to be on call anymore. Uh, you're going to get gas connected back. Uh, even the oil, the price are going to go for the oil crudes and it's got minerals it's going to go down probably at least till the public opinion shifts about everything and then we go back to old old normal basically more and more people under the bridges and we're going to concentrate on a terrorism on european soil for the good for the sake of good old colonialism uh we're going to be examining more and more uh, what we already got used to, uh, domestic terror issues related to the Muslims, which are, by the way, paying an enormous price these days in Israel and Palestine. Uh, and so to make that transformation 
uh, to a greater extent of affluence of NATO in Middle East, Africa, uh, and other parts of the world, uh, it was a very necessary deal with Russia. And so uh, I do expect exactly what I stated. We just gonna, I'm just gonna take a date and time here. Yeah, I would say that this was this this is just a business. Uh, NATO is not gonna go broke. No, don't worry about it. Germany paid the lowest NATO membership dues fees. Also, it's not going to go broke. Don't worry about it. Everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be so fantastic, so good. So, Back to USSR. Yeah, there is just uh, the news about the Israel over there. Let's see. Let's see if there is like anything else. But Donald Trump is still hanging in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're not very strong these days on Ukraine. Uh, maybe maybe we should wait uh, for a post transition uh, period and you know, then uh, it's going to be all kinds of stories and, you know, all kinds of stuff they're going to be releasing about uh, why it was necessary uh, and how wonderful it is now and so on and so forth. Yeah, so they were really, really much more, um, you know, generous a little earlier when I started to record all this stuff. So before I say completely bye-bye, you know, since... They were much more generous than what I see right now the case is. Um, I'm going to do another thing. Like, I'm going to enter this magic words here. And you're going to see just how assistance to Ukraine is hanging by a thread. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to enter, like, this magic words inside of the browser. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some of that stuff here. And so that you get to see something else about all this stuff here. Because it was on and it all disappeared. All right, so you like this, and yeah, this is all recorded today still on, as you see right there, December 5th, 2023. How do you like this stuff here? I mean, everything was stable, everything was normal, and everything was under control. Everything was normal, everything was under control. We had what is known as a counter-offensive. 
And it's just I'm surprised that we are in a, such a different situation just five days after this major meeting where it was this all this support, this uh, um, relentless, unconditional, ongoing, what will be a support and so on. So I am... Uh, How about the student debt, Mr. Joe Biden? Um, business first. So I get it. Okay. The reason for Russia not entering European Union and NATO in 1998 and 1999, when European Union officials, NATO officials insisted to Russia are now, to me, from my point of view, from my perspective, Completely, completely understandable. Completely, completely clear. Folks, I have watched all this stuff. I witnessed all this stuff. People meeting in the background of it all. And it becomes crystal clear about where the whole thing is taken to. They hoped that I would die, that the cancer would eat me out, that I would not even survive. I would. They hoped I wouldn't be even talking to you about they... You wouldn't hear my voice anymore. You wouldn't see any of it. That's basically what they bargained for. And we can see what they were concentrated on, what, how it all works, basically how they operate. Now we get the, the clear idea about the whole thing, basically how, what kind of ethics, what exactly how it all operated what this was all about. Bah. 